In this video, I'm going to explain how multiplayer games work in Unreal Engine by taking a look at the most popular game built on Unreal, Fortnite. Now, I don't know all the details since I don't work at Epic Games, but I'm going to share what I've gathered by watching some technical talks, reading the Unreal documentation and source code, as well as capturing some network traffic while playing a game of Fortnite. I'll explain how the game running on your computer stays in sync with the server, what ping actually means and how zero ping is impossible, and also what happens when you start lagging or run into other issues. When you start up Fortnite and hit play, you connect to a matchmaking service run by Epic Games. It groups you together with 99 other people and assigns you to a game server. The server is also running a copy of Fortnite just like your computer, and has a freshly loaded map and waiting for players. Now, the most important thing to remember here is that the real game is being played on the server. You and all the other players connecting to it are actually playing a slightly out of sync copy of the game. This is because of ping or network latency. The server decides what loot to spawn, who fires their weapon first, and who owns the wall when two players build at the same time. All your computer does is send input from the mouse, keyboard, or controller back to the server so it can decide what to do. The server and all the players stay in sync by sending little packets of data over the internet. While playing a game, I set up a packet sniffer called Wireshark to capture all the packets sent back and forth between my copy of the game and the server's copy. The game server that was assigned to me had this address. If I run the ping command on my computer, you can see how long it takes to send some data to this server and then get something back. MS stands for milliseconds, or one one thousandths of a second. One thing that determines your ping is how far away you are from the server. I'm a hundred miles or so from this one in San Francisco, so it's pretty fast. If I ping a server on the east coast, you can see it takes a lot more time. Part of this is due to physics, since data packets can't go faster than the speed of light. So the closer you are to the server, the better your ping will be. Another factor is that when you send a packet to a server, it doesn't go in a straight line. Instead you bounce through a messy network of switches and routers, and every hop along the way adds a little bit of time. Imagine you had to drive to where the server is. You're going to take a bunch of different roads going in different directions, and probably hit a few road bumps or traffic lights along the way. Some internet providers can have a better path than others as well, but these change over time so it's hard to know which one's best. If you add up all the travel time and stops along the way, you get your ping. Now, there's no such thing as zero ping, because everything takes some time. Don't believe what Fortnite's showing you. Even if you're playing on a LAN, you'll probably still have a couple milliseconds of delay. What really matters though is how your ping compares to other people that you're playing against. The more this difference is, the bigger the advantage or disadvantage you'll have. Now, once you connect to the server, it's going to tell you to load the same map that it has running. Since all the graphics, audio, skins, and map layout are already on your computer from when you installed it, this loads fast. The server then sends you everything that's changed since the base map, like what players have connected and where all the random weapons should be. Once you and all the other players assigned to it connect and sync up, the battle bus takes off. As the game plays out, the server is constantly receiving packets from every player connected about where they want to move, when to shoot, and what to build. The server is also sending you data about map changes and where other players are. On average, my game was sending about 50 packets a second to the server, and the server was sending about 30 packets a second to my game. More packets are sent back and forth when there is more action happening. For example, you can see the extra packets being sent here during this fight. Because of ping, these updates don't happen instantly in the real game server. The game running on your computer may play sounds or animations of you moving or shooting to make it feel like it's instant, but it's not. This is a common game feature called client-side prediction. Your game guesses what will happen on the server and plays it out, but sometimes the server decides to do something else if things are changing quickly or if the server or network are too busy. For example, you may shoot someone who appears in one place on your screen, but on the server they may have already moved somewhere else. The server decides you missed and deals no damage, even though it looks like it hit on your screen. The server doesn't update you with everything that's happening all over the map, it only shows you what's happening near you. This is due to a feature in Unreal Engine called the Replication Graph, and it's there to make sure that the server and network don't get too busy. If you've ever watched or played a competitive game where there are 70 or so players building and shooting near each other, you might notice some lag. Builds might not place right away, players can teleport, and you might see some blank hit markers when you shoot. This happens because the server is being overloaded with all the input from the players, updating its copy of the game, and then sending all those updates out to every player so their copy can also be updated. This can be a lot of data to process, and the server eventually catches up, but you might notice some lag. It doesn't matter how fast your computer or internet connection are, sometimes it's the server or network that's slow. Now, an overloaded server is not the only reason you can see lag or other weird behavior. A more common problem is packet loss. If your internet connection is not very reliable, or if you don't have a lot of bandwidth, packet updates being sent or received from the server might get dropped. 
By default, games in Unreal Engine, including Fortnite, use an internet protocol called UDP. This stands for User Datagram Protocol, but it's sometimes referred to as the Unreliable Datagram Protocol. It's fast and it works great most of the time, but there's no guarantee that the packets being sent will be delivered. For example, if you're playing over a 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi network when someone runs a microwave nearby, you're going to get some packet loss. Or, if you share your connection with lots of people and they are all streaming movies or also playing games, some packets might be dropped. The best solution is to make sure you're hardwired with an ethernet cable all the way to your home router. And to make sure you have a good enough internet connection so it doesn't get saturated from everyone using it. One other thing to consider is that it appears the game servers are only running at 30 hertz. This means they only send updates to players 30 times per second. They probably do this to make sure the servers don't get too busy, as well as try to balance it out somewhat when people have very different ping times. So even if you have the fastest CPU, GPU, and a 240Hz monitor, the server is going to update your game much less often than yours runs at. The experience will look better and feel smoother to you, but you don't get much of a competitive advantage. As you can see, there's a lot to keep in mind when making a multiplayer game in Unreal Engine. You have to figure out what code runs on the client versus what runs on the server. And when it runs on the server, you have to keep it pretty fast so the server doesn't get overloaded when a lot of players are connected. You need to figure out how best to handle things out of your control, like when players have high latency or packet loss. You also have to figure out what things you need to replicate between the client and the server. Unreal has some great documentation on networking and multiplayer to get you started, and of course you can always read the source code to see exactly what's going on. It does quite a bit for you right out of the box, but there's still going to be a lot for you to work out in your own game. In the next video, I'm going to start adding multiplayer support to the game I've been working on while keeping all these things in mind. If you have any questions, be sure to ask in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.